You can browse stunning hillshade maps, like this one of the Upper Buffalo River in the Arkansas Ozarks, derived from laser-measured elevation data, or LIDAR. And now you can do it in 3D, thanks to a recent upgrade in the U.S. Geologic Survey's wonderful online mapping resource, the National Map. This upgrade happened just a few months after we released a tutorial video on how to use the earlier version of the National Map, and we've since been contacted by viewers asking for new guidance on how to navigate various changes in the platform. So today on Ozark Outsider, we're going to take you through an updated tutorial on how to access and browse LiDAR-derived hillshade maps, how to find other map layers of interest, how to use fun tools like cross-section measurements, how to set transparency and other display options, and more. You can find a link to the national map in the video description below. A quick note here, we're an independent channel run by two self-employed folks, so if you end up finding this tutorial useful, we'd appreciate any support you can provide, whether clicking the thanks button on the video or sending us a tip via Ko-fi at the link below. Liking and commenting helps too. The national map is built around two basic features that you need to be familiar with. Base maps are the background mapping imagery. Think of these like a paper map or aerial photo you'd unroll on a desk. We'll let you explore the options yourself. Sadly, the base map of digitized old-school topographic maps available in the earlier national map has vanished from this newer version. We really like that feature. We contacted USGS about this, and the response suggested that the likely reason for removal was that the dataset is hosted by Esri and has entered mature support, meaning it is no longer being updated and maintained. For now, this base map can still be viewed directly through the Esri viewer, and we'll include a link below. But layers are where the fun really starts. Click on this symbol to load a menu of different datasets that can be overlain on the base map of your choice. Click the little crossed out eye symbol to turn on a layer. Active layers will show an open eye. This is the digital equivalent of laying a transparency over that paper map on your desk. For example, try exploring land cover or aerial photography. Other layers can help you navigate. For example, turning on the governmental unit boundaries layer can help you recognize where you are. You can only have one base map at a time turned on, but you can have as many layers on as you want. Now let's talk about the biggest update in this new version of the national map, the ability to view mapping data in 3D. A quick note here, those of you with a slow internet connection, like our rural service, may need to be patient with some of the 3D features. To switch from the default 2D mode to 3D, just click this little toggle box here on the left side. Initially the map looks the same, but you now have the ability to rotate the view in all directions. Select this symbol, and the left mouse button will slide the map around. Select this rotation symbol, and the left button will rotate the view. In either case, the right button will also do whatever you haven't selected. So for example, when you're sliding with the left button, you can rotate with the right. You can zoom in and out using the plus minus buttons here, or by using a scroll wheel if your mouse has one. And this all works the same with any layers you have turned on, like LiDAR. Slide side to side, rotate back and forth, zoom in and out. It all gives you so many more ways to explore our fascinating landscape. For example, this view really helps you see how the Boston Mountains on the southern edge of the Ozarks form a major escarpment rising up from the Arkansas River Valley. Really, that's all there is to 3D mode, but it's such a powerful tool for seeing map data in new ways. Now let's explore a few of the LiDAR mapping products you can access within the national map, using the particularly interesting karst landscape of the Sunklands region near Missouri's current river. We've circled some impressive sinkholes here. All LiDAR hillshade products appear in the layer menu as various forms of 3D EP elevation. Hillshade is the most basic. This takes LiDAR-derived elevation data and extrapolates a three-dimensional surface, then shines an imaginary light across that surface to create shadows that help the landscape's texture stand out. Hillshade stretched is what we tend to use. It stretches the elevation a bit to make landscape features stand out more. This means that features look a bit taller or deeper than they really are, but it's more effective visually when you're just exploring. 
multi-directional hill shade shines an imaginary light across the surface from multiple directions. This can be really useful for looking at certain topographic settings, like karst features, that might be more hidden by a single light angle. Elevation Tinted combines the basic hill shade with a spectrum of color that changes with elevation. The colors represent the same elevation ranges everywhere, so this can be handy if you're trying to trace a particular elevation range across the landscape. Auto Contours calculates topographic lines from the LiDAR data, rather than deriving them from older paper maps. This can be useful for interpreting the topography within LiDAR data. Just keep in mind that, in karst areas, these lines won't notate sinks with hash marks the way older topo maps did. Now we'll explore a few other features that you may find useful here in the igneous core of the Ozarks, the St. Francis Mountains. Layers appear in the view in the order in which they're stacked in the menu. So, for example, if you have the hillshade stretched layer turned on, then try to view the NAIP imagery, you won't see any change because the hillshade layer is above the imagery layer. But if you grab the six dots on the left side of the layer and drag, you can rearrange the layer order so that now the imagery is above the hillshade. This is really useful when used with opacity, which lets you set how transparent a given layer is. Click the three dots next to a layer's name, then select Opacity. Now you can use a slider to determine how much any underlying layer or base map shows through. So here, we can set the imagery to partly transparent so that the underlying terrain is also visible. This is also really useful for locating roads and other features beneath a hillshade layer. Many layers also have submenus of features that you can turn on and off. For example, within governmental unit boundaries, there are both labels and features. So we can go in here and turn on county boundaries, and we can go in here and turn on county labels. Some layers or sublayers are also scale dependent, meaning they'll only be accessible at certain levels of zoom. For example, this sublayer is grayed out, and we'd have to change our zoom level to access it. There are also two really useful measurement tools, though both seem more finicky to us than their predecessors. For example, this icon lets you generate an elevation profile across the landscape. Click to start and to add points, then double click to end. Annoyingly for Americans, it defaults to metric, which you can change to many other units by clicking the little gear symbol. Hovering the cursor over this profile lets you measure the elevation at any point. For example, this profile between Springfield and Branson really helps us see how the landscape descends nearly 600 feet as you drop off the escarpment of the Springfield Plateau into the rugged terrain of the White River Valley. When you're done, hit New Profile to start over, or click the trash can icon to clear your work. There's also a basic measurement tool for distances and areas. Here again, click to start and to add points, then double click to end. It also defaults to metric, though again, you can change that. Make sure to click clear when you're done, or the measurement tool may stay active with annoying results. There's so much more to the national map, but those are the basics to get you started with the LiDAR layers. Go explore more fascinating landscapes, like the chain of massive sinkholes at Missouri's Hahatonka State Park. You can click the help link to access useful definitions and guidance. If this video is helpful, please consider supporting our work by liking, commenting, and sharing the video. The more people appreciate our amazing landscapes, the better.